I'm Weeksy from Western Australia and you're watching episode 10 and tonight we have along some fantastic guests the Surf Witches Takeover so I'm really excited about that but before we tell you a bit more about the Surf Witches and get to meet uh, a member and a founder and find out more about what they've been up to let's chuck a lap around the country and I'm going to start at the bottom this time around because Kira's been getting first go a couple of times lately Nathan Riverland he's had a haircut looking sharp mate how's things in Victoria yeah hey guys um hey Weeksy um the waves have been all right this week it's been Bit fickle the start of the week. Um, it was a bit funny. We had a few little onshore gusts come through, so um, it wasn't epic. We had a bit of size though, um, and then the last few days um, it's been okay, and we've got a bit of a switch of offshore winds and low tide in the morning, so we've been getting some nice early morning waves. Beautiful, and always good to get a surf in, especially at the start of the day. It makes the whole rest of the day go better. The next part of the show is going to be a bit shorter than normal because Maddie Shinoski is not with us this week, so he won't get the Sydney Surf Report. Although I think Sean might be trying to get us a special Sydney report in by the end of the show. We'll see how we go with that. Skipping around the coast, uh, further north in the Byron Bay area, what, we have another missing presenter tonight. So I know he's one of your guys' favourites, but uh, Jack Entwistle has work to do and we can't stop him from doing that. And that brings us neatly to the Gold Coast and uh, the man who made all this possible in the first place, Mr. Sean McEwen. How are you, big guy? Yeah, great. Eh? Another fantastic uh, oh, couple of days here on the Southern Points. We've had good waves. Uh, crowd numbers, once again, are just out of control. But uh, I guess that's something we're going to have to live with. But, um, yeah, stoked to be uh, having a special guest on tonight. Uh, we just see so many girls out there surfing all the time now. 50% of the crowd, so they should be getting 50% of the airtime. Absolutely. And, well, representing... Uh the, the small demographic in not quite so many numbers, but our one female panelist who's with us every week, champion surfer from the Sunshine Coast, up all up in Noosa. How are you, Kira? How has your week been? Good, thanks. Yeah, it's been a pretty busy week up here. We've had a few waves around in certain places. So just basically the points. So it's been a bit crowded because the southerly winds have taken out surfing on the open. So you get to see everyone who lives in Noosa on the same break, usually those days. But that's nice too. <laughs> Nice one. And uh, I'm still jealous of that barrel shot behind you there, mate. It's uh, Every time I see it, I'm just jealous. I need to go surfing more and get a better shot. But uh, you were going to be our host this week. That We had this cunning plan that you were going to take over my gig. But uh, obviously, you just got home from work and you do about 25 different jobs. So uh, maybe we'll put you on the spot for next time around. But uh, represent, and obviously, you can uh, drive the conversation, I think, tonight as well, though, because, uh, well, a revolution we've seen in longboarding over the time I've been involved certainly is from the ladies' side. And uh, it went from being very small numbers of competitions, very small numbers in the waters, especially lady longboarders, but lady surfers in general. And uh, over the last decade or so, we've seen a massive increase of numbers and a vast improvement uh, of performance level of female surfers. And Kira obviously exemplifies that. She, uh, she'll give well, she'll give any guy a run for their money in a, in a surfing competition. And uh, the girls have certainly, well, taken the helm as far as uh, the biggest leaps forward and uh, some of my favourite surfers, full stop, are uh, female surfers. And joining us tonight, the found, one of the founders and uh, one of the long-term members. I'm going to switch out to, to group view so everyone can see everybody. But we're joined tonight from, uh, from Mon, one of the founders, and CJ on the Gold Coast. Sorry, sorry, Mon in Canada, one of the founders with all the boards behind her. CJ on the Gold Coast. And uh, they're from the Surf, which is welcome along, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Yes. It's a uh, better point out, Mon, it's, you're obviously not in the same time zones as us. I'm in Western Australia, so I'm two hours earlier in the day than everybody else. What time is it where you are, mate? Hey, I'm rocking in at 3 a.m. here. <laughs> oh, gosh. I think you're going to get the commitment award for this week, uh, and I'll, I'll have to send you some Huey's Choice wax for the effort. But uh, And CJ on the Gold Coast, obviously, uh, just down the road from Sean McEwen. Thanks so much, guys, for joining us tonight. And... Uh, look forward to hearing more about the group. So obviously, Mon, as one of the founders, maybe you were a good place to get us started, uh, the surf, which is how and where did you guys form? So uh, in uh, 20, early 2019, I was actually living on the Gold Coast for three, uh, a few months at that point. And I had just started surfing and, you know, right away had taken to it and just loved it. And 
grabbed my roommate and started asking her to come along with me. And we just started going every day. And um, then we actually ended up meeting two other women in the water and they were just learning at the same time. So it all actually kind of formed pretty organically. Uh, we were just out there having a blast, learning how to surf, uh, making friends. And, you know, it was just, it felt good. We were having fun. And from there, we just started this, we just kind of started this group. So I already had the nickname um, of Surf Witch when I uh, met these girls. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa, you can't <laughs> just get past that. Back it up. I know, I was like, and glazing on by. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not right here, mate. Okay. How did you get that nickname? So uh, in my household, uh, I had the, my nickname was actually Witch of the North. <laughs> oh, that uh, makes perfect from sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it just clears it all up. Um, but it was just kind of a joke at me being from Canada and also me being a little like sassy. So I was called Witch of the North and then I just, I had just started surfing and one of our roommates, the one who always called me Witch of the North, he goes, well, I guess you're a surf witch now. And then it just kind of stuck. And I was like, yeah, I, I am a surf witch. And, uh, my roommate joined in too and started calling herself a surf witch. And we met these other girls and we, so the other girls were Hannah and Miranda, the other two founders. Um, so we met them and we didn't tell them right away. We were like, oh, let's hold off on letting them know what we call ourselves. <laughs> so we didn't want to scare them off. <laughs> um, but yeah, we eventually told them and they also loved it. And, you know, our group just cut, kind of started growing and it was getting to the point we couldn't even like keep up on texting with each other. Like it was just difficult to plan our, our meetups. So um, at the beginning of March, 2019, Hannah, our other founder, uh, she's also responsible for a lot of the beautiful photographs I sent in today. Uh, she started our Facebook page and from there it's just been blowing up. So yeah, that's how we, we got rolling. <laughs> Fantastic. And by blowing up, I mean, you're talking big numbers. I think Sean uh, mentioned to me uh, before, uh, before we'd even started doing this uh, Oz Longboarding webcast, actually, I think he was saying, oh, yeah, the surf witches, you know, they've got 1200 members in a week or something like that. And so, uh, <laughs> how, how, how many, uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so what what sort of numbers are we talking globally? Well, 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 okay. Over the year, we we are at um just for our Facebook group, we are at around thirteen hundred. Wow. But uh, like most of that's concentrated concentrated on the Gold Coast. Um, so that is, I think that's pretty big numbers for just like a a local group. Uh, whose whose goal is just to hang out. <laughs> Absolutely, hang out. That's huge. Um, but yeah, I was just you know, and I think you mentioned it before we got talking. It's we're not the only female surf group out there. Like this is a thing that's really taking off right now where there's female surf groups everywhere where all these women want to get involved in the sport. And this is a good way for them to do it. And they, you know, they feel comfortable and they feel like supported and empowered to get out there because they've got this like female girl gang behind them, you know? So yeah, it's, it's not, um, we're, we're not unique, but uh, yeah, it's definitely working for us. So. I'm, I'm just looking at if you guys all get together, you be able to sway governments, <laughs> all the different groups yeah. all together, and it's like the governments will just be begging, like female surfers, what do we have to do to get the boat? <laughs> <Yeah. Right? laughs> Political so, party, female so the, surfers. Yeah. <laughs> the, the picture we can see behind you there, just talk us through that. Is that is, uh, like a group meet? Is that a regular thing? Okay, so this is not our average group meet. Um, so the picture behind me is from we did an Insta meet with uh, there was a bunch of uh, amateurs, some amateur, some more. Uh, experienced local photographers. Um, so we brought whoever, whatever girls wanted to come out uh, could, and they could get their photos taken if they were out on the waves that day by these photographers. And it gave the photographers a chance to kind of get out there, practice their surf photography skills or like water photography skills as well, and or test out new equipment for them. Um, so they basically had free models. Our girls got free photos, um, but it was a total blast, but we probably wouldn't do something of this magnitude again because it was also epic mayhem. Like, and we tried to control it. We were like, okay, like we split it into um, levels of experience. So like, you know, I, I took out all the beginners and the whitewash, we had all the whitewash warriors. Um, then there was a group of intermediate that were kind of like, you know, out in the middle, some of the good waves, but not quite in the back. And then we tried to send the advanced people way out in the back and it just, it didn't really play out as well <laughs> as we had hoped. So it just kind of ended up being a, a little bit hectic in the water. And uh, 
while it was fun, we'd probably not do something like that again. <laughs> I think it was also it was a learning experience for us. How many people did you have um, on that day? So that day there was, I think at one point we were around 60 women, not including the number of photogs we had in the water as well. And it just, it was way too many. I, it was to the point, it was, a, it was too crazy. But uh, typically our meetups that we would get on an average day. So, I mean, when we're not in the times we're in right now, um, we arrange weekly meetups for the girls. Uh, and we'll usually see, I think, you know, anywhere from five to max, maybe 15 people. Um, and we also, because we allow our girls to post in our group and make up their own meetups, there's so many of them running during the week that they, they never are that crowded and people can pick the ones that are kind of the most available to them based on their schedule, right? Because you've got moms out there, you've got working women, you've got just like everyone um, doing their thing. So they can find other women that are kind of on similar schedules, similar skill levels and like get out there together. So this isn't ideal, but it was fun and it, <laughs> it made a good photo. <laughs> Now, the thing you be careful of making the locals unhappy as well, but uh, <laughs> yeah, and that is that is a very I'm, big concern of ours. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure Sean can relate uh, from an organisational point of view as well about how hard it is to get a group that size all on the same page doing the same thing. But yeah. welcome as also to the show, CJ. There you are. So uh, I'm just guessing that's a shot of you doing a bottom turn on the goalie there. But CJ, welcome to the show, and uh, let us know how did you one of the but earliest or one of the longest term members. How did you first hear about it and get involved in, and what has it brought to your surfing world? Well, I heard about it um, in the surf actually by another female surfer and um, I was one of the ones that under the 200 mark um, in about October last year. So that shows you how much it's grown in just six months, just over six months. So um, for me, I got involved with it because I didn't want to surf by myself. I didn't really know too many people in the community. I'd only been up here for uh, four years. So um, the thing, like Mon said, the thing that's so awesome about Surf Witches is because everyone just posts on uh, Facebook where they're going to be. So you'll go and might catch up with only one or two people at a certain break. So we get to spread the joy and um, and everyone's so supportive and so awesome. So, yeah, it's 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 been great to always know that you can surf with someone else and I was unfortunate enough to get hit in the head a, uh, about a month or so ago and thankfully I was out there with three or four witches and they helped me in and helped me out and drove me home and, oh, <laughs> and looked amazing. after me but it just goes to show the importance of you know surfing can be dangerous and, and it was a beautiful calm day but to have the support of other people and they're watching your back as well which you know just shows you how how awesome um, the community is so yeah, it's been it's been great. The surf witches, uh, you know, throwing themselves in the community. I also run, which is the photo behind me, um, Fluoro Fridays with One Wave, and um, we go out on a Saturday. And the surf witches have just been such a huge support of that, getting out and spreading the word about, you know, how good surfing is for um, for everyone's well being and for their mental health. So um, we've sort of come together as a, as two different surfing communities to join one, and it's just it's just been awesome. Go from strength to strength. Unreal. I've got a couple of female surfers here in WA who I really need to introduce you guys to. Are you looking, have you, have you, do you have a surf which is in Western Australia? Because if you don't, I've got two names. Two, two we, have, we have them everywhere. We even have a couple yeah. in America now and obviously mine in Canada. So we've got the blue wristbands yeah. that we wear. So um, let us know and we can post them out and yeah. <laughs> get them all involved. Yeah, my, my, my daughter's in America in Wisconsin where there's no surf at all and she's wearing around telling everyone about the surf wishes. So it's not going to be long till we take over the world. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the blue wristbands. Um, so the blue wristbands was an idea that one of our women came up with because we'd get out in the water and everyone would just lose each other. Um, or, you know, you don't want to wait for people on the shore. Uh, you want to get out there and enjoy, enjoy the water as soon as you get there. So... Uh, someone was like, okay, let's get these, these wristbands and we can all identify each other. So I'm actually not wearing mine. I'm holding my wrist up, but there's nothing there. Um, but, uh, are you wearing yours, CJ or no? No, no, one's in my car. Cause that's where I've always oh, put it. Guys. No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> it's not good enough. <laughs> 3 a.m. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so basically we just, we pro provide these wristbands and, um, we have them at like some local coffee shops. I think this surfboard warehouse is now carrying them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, some of our local vendors on the gold coast carry them and we just for like a gold coin donation, girls can grab them and then they can spot each other. 
And so even if they go out without the surf witches, if they're interested in, if they want to run into them, if they throw the band on, someone will recognize them. And you'll see girls out in the water, like waving their bands at each other yeah. and being a surf witch. <laughs> so, it's and then they cool. can, we, we've met so many different people just from being out there and seeing the wristband going, oh, you're a surf witch. And they go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have a conversation and next thing you've got a new best friend. Um, yeah. It's, it's really cool. And especially like, because we do those Facebook posts, no one ever looks like their person in their profile. So when we say we're meeting up somewhere, you could just show the band. It's like Shazam, you know. <laughs> Holding <laughs> we, it up in the air. It's like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it's, it's if you guys cool. take over the best peak, do you reckon I could get away with it? Just chuck on the wristband and just sort of try and cruise in and... Uh... <laughs> you grow so scared of half of the lady there. <laughs> do, 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 do. I have to have a shave, you're right. Kira. You might have to grow a hair weeksy too. And short. You, have to get rid of, you have to get rid of your mo. Hey, <laughs> I'm on their Facebook page. It says no guys, but they let me mm -hmm. join them. So stay. We have a couple of honorary... honorary um, male surf witches who are big supporters and they're, they're photographers that come and follow us out and, and uh, take some really cool photos. So we are certainly not anti-male. We, in, <laughs> uh, all our partners and uh, friends and that come in and they surf with us. So we're very, very inclusive. Well, you know, the surf warlocks, they'll be able to use the same logo, you see. So it's just, it's just made. Yeah. <laughs> now I see like uh, one of your photographers, uh, every time I go to the beach, he's there, the guy with the beard, uh, that follows around, takes all the photos, and he's such a big supporter of what you girls are doing. Yeah, Ta Tav is uh, is one of them, as well as Kirby from On the Road Imagery. That they're they're awesome. You know, they uh, whenever we need someone there, they're the first ones in the in the water usually. So it's good to see. We have quite a few uh, like male supporters, not just like in the our photographers, but uh, I know. So this all started at the alley in Corumban. And there's definitely like there's some older guys that surf there that have been around forever and they're huge supporters. And if they see me out in the water, they'll be they'll find new beginner girls and like drag them over to me in the water and be like, you need to meet this woman. And like just bring them over to me and be like, this woman's a surf witch. She needs to tell you all about it. And he'll yell at me. He'll be like, give her a wristband, you know. <laughs> so we have really good support out there from the local community of like the, the men as well. So that's been that's been really nice. Yeah. Uh, unreal. Yeah. Sorry, Nathan. Nathan's works down at the uh, the wave pool down at Tullamarine in Victoria. Well, when okay. when when it's not COVID infested and they're allowed to surf. <laughs> uh, yeah. But Nathan, have you got have you have you come across the surf witches down on the uh, the real beaches down there at all? Have you got many down in Victoria? Um, I've definitely heard of the group, the surf witches. Um, but yeah, I was just going to say how you know inspirational we have so many yeah females down here. Um, that uh, collect, uh, you know, getting in little groups and all going surfing together. So it's really inspirational to see like a you know, proper big group um, that's been formed and I'll, I'll definitely be um, talking, talking it up down here because I, I want them to get in contact with you guys and oh, yeah. oh, it'd be epic. Yeah, it'd be great to have little chapters all around the country and across the world, I think. It would be um, yeah. pretty awesome. I'd say it's, it's, it's inevitable. It has yeah. to happen. It has to happen. <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're joining us from everywhere, so. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I told you guys before we came on the show, I told Mon, I think, before you arrived, CJ, but a friend of mine, Jessica, in Israel, she's in Haifa. Uh, she surfs a longboard over there, and I was telling her about you guys last night. We were doing a different uh, podcast, webcasting, and she's frothing. So if you want an Israel chapter, uh, Jessica Rose, she's actually yeah. tuned in and said, CJ, your arm keeps disappearing. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so hi, Jessica in Israel. But uh, so certainly there's excitement straight away. Uh, a friend of mine who runs a couple of Fluoro Friday uh, surfs here in Perth, I know she'll be mad keen on being a part of it as well. So we'll have to, um, I think your Facebook page is going to get smashed after this. It's going to get, <laughs> as the word spreads out, I think you guys are going to, you're nodding your head there, Kira. Is it something you think that's yeah, special? Yeah, I just, now you've said all of this, I've basically got a message a chat with a heap of group of girls around Noosa who just like, I keep adding people or I'll have a coaching session or add someone. Now I'm just going to be like, everyone join the surf, which is, and it'll be so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some blue bands in Noosa as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Bring some up, we'll come up for a surf trip and bring, bring a box for you. <laughs> and we yeah. are happy to out like we have women from around the world that are like uh i just want to be involved in your group <laughs> can you send me a band and we'll like post one out Ooh. so 
So yeah. We're going. With all these girls that are apartment, what's the age range from you know, how young to how old that are involved? So we actually, CJ put up a, a poll, like right after you had invited us to, uh, to join you guys for a call. And CJ, do you remember what the results were of that? Yeah, so the I'm just trying to actually find that the right yeah. stats, but majority of um, our members were between the ages of 30 and 40. The majority, the next one between 40 and 50. And we even have three that are over 60. So, and there might've been one over 70 actually, now I think about it. But um, yeah, you put it a place like that. I think we got over like 110 responses in, in half a day. It was amazing. Oh, so. Yeah. They're very keen to um, support each other, I think, and, and, and get the word out as well. So it's been good. And what sort of boards, well, board length are the girls riding? You know, is it mainly short board, mid length, long boards? Yeah, we, ha we have a bit of a majority actually, but um, of late, which I've noticed, um, most of them are going for the over nine foot single fin that I've noticed. And, and I think we must be doing great for the industry because now I've seen a couple of these girls um, surfing on their new boards and all I want to do now is go out and upgrade mine and have a nice one. But um, most of them are on long boards and I think that's because, you know, it's a bit easier to start with and, and everyone's realising that, that uh, get on a long board, you can get on a wave, you get addicted pretty quickly um, and then they sort of get down to a bit shorter. But we have quite a few ladies on short boards as well that are, that are you know, really awesome and we sit there gobsmacked but yeah i'd say most of them are probably over eight foot nine you'd agree with that mom i'm That's getting distracted <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry about that i'm just having a look at some photos in the background as, as, as you're talking but uh, some great <laughs> photos. i'm smiling to myself because i know i've i've, I've uh, met sean through commentating mm -hmm. at surfing competitions nathan uh, commentates surfing competitions in victoria kira wins surfing competitions everywhere um <laughs> so uh we know what it's like when you arrive somewhere and set up a competition and put up the flags. So what I'd like to know, in fact, I'm looking at the feed, uh, the live stream on Facebook at the same time and a couple, couple of grumpy old men going, rrr, 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 people, bloody yeah. women. So because, you, because you're not organized <laughs> in, in, in that sense and you haven't got your flags and your tents and your, your approval yeah. or whatever, have you had any run-ins so far with the, the locals or, or people being pretty supportive? Or is it, as you say, there's only been one or two big meetings and most of the time it's just, three or four crew so most of the time it's really it is small um we haven't had any we haven't had any run-ins um we've definitely like her like when we did this one big group up, meet up that the one behind me we did we did hear a little bit after where people were like that was too many people in the water and on our end we didn't expect that many to show up so it was kind of a fluke um and we've never had more than 10 to 15 people show up to a meetup and all of a sudden we had 60 uh, so, so that, you know, Where was we that? did Which hear beach? that. Sorry? Which beach was that? That was at the alley. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. The alley's already, we all know the alley's already kind of mayhem most days. I, I'm, I'm just trying to picture 60, 60 people rocking up at most of my surf spots where I surf in WA. It probably wouldn't be all that great either. I was trying to think of that. <laughs> you know, but for us, it was a learning experience where we were like, okay, like this is something that we have to keep in mind um, not just well so like obviously we don't want to upset the locals we we generally work really well with them like we'll reach out we work, reach out to surf schools we've asked for you know them to help us in providing proper like so just to give you a little more background the founders and I we are we were all beginners at the beginning of 2019 I'm still very much a beginner um, so we were learning ourselves oh, wow. so we yeah so we have reached out the group like it kind of started for like a lot of beginner women to get out together so that they could feel comfortable going and doing that right um and then we've grown and now we have women in in all ranges so but you know we were still learning so we've reached out to even like local surf schools um to provide us information and guidance on you know proper surf etiquette and like how to be safe in the water and that's something that we also hold up there where it's super important to us uh to make sure not only are we not upsetting the locals but we're not setting our girls up or like women up in a situation that's you know it's unsafe um we want everyone to go out and have a good time and get home in one piece and you know since that event especially that's one thing we've been pushing a lot more on our page and our, we're trying to get more blogs that do talk about those topics um and reminding women about surf etiquette 
as much as we can and reminding them that when they're wearing our wristband, we do expect them to follow surf etiquette and be respectful to other surfers in the water. And if they're not willing to do that, we ask they don't wear our band or represent us. So, mm. yeah. <laughs> so we, we are definitely, uh, we are very aware of the impact a large group like that can have on the local community and we don't want to ruin people's breaks for them. So um, I don't expect we'll have another meetup like that again. And it's just kind of a, a learning lesson along the way. Excellent. Well, I think I I'm, I'm, I'm looking down here. I don't know, Nate, if you're watching along as well. Our, our yeah. youngsters are a bit more technological, but seeing mm -hmm. some of the comments coming up on the Facebook feed there, and it seems there's a bit, bit a couple of grumpies amongst the lot, which is actually really kind of surprising because I don't know. I think since there's started to be more girls surfing, the vibe in the water has just improved dramatically. Uh, in, instead of, it, it, I think it's normally as soon as there's a couple of girls, it, it, it tends to, it, 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 it's not the, the same level of animosity as what it was when it was just the guys. And I actually love sort of sharing this sort of with girls. So, so the fact that you're all beginners, I guess, uh, well, the, the founders, well, of that, beginners, you know, is, yeah. so I, I like, I wonder if there was, if, was that something that was missing for you as, as you first started surfing in the sense of the camaraderie? It's like when you look out at the surf break and there's 99 people out there and one of them might be a girl, um, yeah. which can happen in a lot of places at certain times and whatnot. Is it um, something, well, Kira, actually, I'll probably better to put that to you. Do you wish something like this had existed when you started out surfing? Um, yeah, definitely. I sort of find, and I coach a lot of like girls groups now as well. Um, and I always find like that there is a little bit more camaraderie when there's a group of girls together. Like, because I think just having that support network of encouragement is always better. Um, and I just noticed with like the young girls that I'm coaching when they've got four or five of them out there being like, yeah, go for this wave, go for this wave. That they actually surf a lot better than what they would, you know, not having that encouragement. So when I was growing up, I would have really liked to have seen that as well. I know, it's a lot more existent and thanks to you girls as well because you know we've we've got that around now sort of thing but um yeah when i started sort of surfing originally it it was like you really did kind of have to prove yourself and catch a wave first before someone would let you have a go and i think if i had a few more girls around me being like you know come on it would have been a bit easier yeah, yeah i think for us for me like i was first starting out when I first tried surfing, I was like, this is going to be like, it was like a, a token of I'm in Australia and I need to try surfing and like, it's going to happen once and it'll probably never happen again. Um, <laughs> but I got out there and I was like, this is amazing. And I want to do it more, but I wasn't super comfortable um, going in like the water where I, I don't know what part's safe. And, you know, I'm not so great at reading the ocean as someone who's grown up around it. Um, so it kind of provided that, uh, just like an extra set of eyes and that security and also also the empowerment of other women cheering you on and you know with our group one of the biggest things if you are out on the line with a bunch of surf which is usually there is a whole lot of cheering and laughing and <laughs> you know everyone making fun of themselves it's like you know it really takes the pressure off to feel like you need to be good um so i think it just creates a better learning environment for most of the women Sorry, CJ, you wanted to say something too. Yeah, I was going to agree. Like, I started surfing um, four and a half years ago um, after getting out of the military for, for after 21 years and trying to find something to keep me excited. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. You're in, you're in the military for 21 years. You don't even look yeah. like you're 21 years old. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> so, yeah, I was in the Army for 21 years and retired up here on the Gold Coast and went, mm, what am I going to do now? That's challenging. And, and for the first three years of that, I, I you know, did a learn to surf course at the alley and that was good. But, but again, I was always surfing by myself. And like um, Kira said, you know, you, you worry because you, the, my confidence level wasn't there in the water. But as soon as I met the surf witches and started going out with them and the cheering and the encouragement thinking, you know, you just put yourself out there and you've got people watching you and got your back and... You know, um, you didn't feel so intimidated, I think, because I, I felt, you know, a bit intimidated, actually, to be out there with all those blokes and going, oh, I'm not nearly as good as them, but I want to have a go. But then put me in an environment with those women that were so awesome and so welcoming. Um, it just changed it. And I think now in the, the around the Gold Coast, especially, like like Mon said, the, the, 
the local community there are embracing us and you know they're knowing that most of us are, are fairly new to surfing and they're really encouraging and you know I was at Green Mountain the other day and a couple of the guys were calling me on the waves and you know encouraged me for great doing a great wave you know I didn't see that three years ago so I think there's been a real shift in the community and and the support you know very grateful for so it certainly improved with, with for a lot of us I think so it's been good. Unreal. And is there plans or do you already have, uh, are you doing a, any sort of like a training attached to it then? Because I, th I, I see this as being a really great opportunity for you guys to do something really powerful and useful, both for yourselves and for everybody else in the water. So, you know, like a, a, an etiquette kind of thing, uh, you know, so you can accelerate that learning curve. If you just go out learning, especially later in life, CJ, don't take that wrong. I'm bored. I'm, I'm, <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, if you're coming into surfing, uh, not a teenager, let's say. I, I started just pre-teen, but um, if you're coming into it late, you haven't got that uh, etiquette built in and stuff. And, and who do you ask? Who do you go and see? So you guys actually have a, a framework where you could get all that knowledge across to, to beginner lady surfers, and that's going to be beneficial for them to make it a smoother transition into the lineup, as well as everyone who's in the lineup, knowing that you guys know paddle to the inside, take a wave on the head, don't, uh, you know, don't paddle, paddle through yeah. the line of the surfer and so on. Is that something that you already do or are planning to do with as part of the group? So we are working on getting, putting together, sorry, CJ, well, we're working on putting okay. together a, uh, uh, um, an article about surf etiquette. But one of our big things right now that we do is with new members, when they tell us they're beginner, um, we generally do ask them to go get surf lessons with an actual coach so that they can learn a, how to well, properly surf for themselves and then also so they can be taught the proper surf etiquette. Um, obviously for the founders, the three of us aren't really in a position for experience wise to be teaching it ourselves, but we do definitely direct the women to like training sessions that are available. Sorry, uh, CJ, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I do. And also one of the, one of the um, things that um, we do on Facebook is when they do sign up, the first part is, is here's the etiquette and here's the rules of being a surf witch. So they go through all the rules, they go through what is expected of you because, you know, it is really important. And like Mon said earlier, you, we don't want to get a bad name for anything. Um, and the other great thing about the, the Facebook page and the group, the women are asking, who do you trust as a surf coach? Who can we go to? Um, so they're people that we've trusted and tried and we know that they'll get looked after, which, um, so we're not just sending them to you know, anyone on the coast who says, oh, we can, we can learn to surf. So I think that's really good. And um, we're getting a great little uh, group of recommendations of people that we use regularly. So, um, but more importantly, there is that etiquette as you come into that Facebook group to say, this is what we expect and please follow it. Otherwise you're out pretty much. Yeah, if you, uh, if you go to our website, it does ask you to uh, sign our pledge. <laughs> hmm. So we are trying to, make it so that the girls feel like they're invested in in something and they know that you know it's important to us that they are abiding by those rules and that we do care about them um so we ask that they they fill that out before they put a wristband on and they agree to them um as cj said if they're not gonna follow the rules they will be out we haven't experienced that yet <laughs> um we have had you know we've had situations where we've noticed some bad surf etiquette in our our own group and we try to you know take it upon ourselves to educate those people individually and, and talk to them about it and give them a chance to improve on it. And generally that's worked really well where we're just like, Hey, um, we noticed this going on or, you know, people felt like you were being too aggressive or, or, or this was happening. And we just try to, we try to teach them through education instead of just being like, you know, you screwed up, you're out. Yeah, <laughs> because, absolutely. you know, we want to be a part of, you know, making the surf community safe and keeping everyone following the etiquette as well. Um, just yeah, so everyone's yeah. about, about surfing in the small groups that it's easier to help someone new to the sport to go well this is how we do it this is this is the right thing to do and it's not confronting for them and they don't feel embarrassed that they've done the right thing and you can guide them mm -hmm. and hold their hand a little bit further so you know it, it's it's great to see those more experienced surfers take the newer ones under their hand and you see it often the newbie will say hey I'm new I've only been out a few times and someone more experienced that's free the next day will say, hey, come meet me out and we'll go out. And, you know, there's a couple of um, people that used to work as surf instructors and I've seen them out in the water giving one-on-ones to brand newies or those coming back from injury that haven't surfed for a while just to get that confidence again, which, you know, which is what the witches are all about. So, 
Can I just say, I think that um, that's amazing. And I think that the surfing community or the locals, whether they're grumpy about it, I, don't, I haven't read the Facebook feed or anything, but I think those girls will be going out and learning how to surf anyway. And the fact that you guys are offering that and that safety, I think the whole local community and surfing community should be really appreciating the effort that you're putting in. Um, not just those girls, but like you're actually making it better for everyone by giving them that opportunity to have that knowledge. So I, I think it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was good. I mean, last weekend was a was um, a good example of it. The surf was really big last weekend and it was really, really good. And we had one girl rock up and she's only been out a couple of times. And I just looked at her and said, you know what? Let's not do that today. <laughs> Let's go get a coffee and we'll watch. And so, you know, sat at the point and watched and, you know, sort of said, look at this wave, look how they're doing this and that. And, you know, both of us got a lot out of that. Um, and it was a hell of a lot safer than going in five foot waves when she's only been out a couple of times. And, you know, if she had a bad experience um, and got a big wipeout and wasn't prepared, she might not come back, you know, and, and we don't want that. So I've got to be totally honest with you, though. When you're learning to surf and you're, and you're gaining those skills, you shouldn't be at the best name breaks. I, and I think that's a... Uh, not 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 ever sort of thing but i think that's a general uh across the board yeah, I agree. I, I, and certainly i'm glad it's not enforced the way it was when i was a little kid but uh if you're learning <laughs> to surf and you don't know where to put your board and you don't know how to get out the way of the surfer on the wave and you don't you don't belong at the, the premium breaks and that's a, that doesn't Absolutely. matter male female young old it really doesn't matter and yeah. as Kira yeah, said, we totally think, agree you know, by, by having that mentoring and by having someone there keeping on, oh, no, over that way, you know, go, go. I think it, it'll accelerate the curve and make it a better place for everybody. So I'm 100% I'm, uh, I'm on board. I reckon that, um, like I say, the, the momentum you're gathering shows that there's um, a, a need and a want for it. And I reckon we'll find that a lot of uh, women surfers will develop who, who otherwise might have given up and, uh, and ran away. And frankly, um, some of the uh, some of the guys out there in the water, they may think that if they turn up on their own, it's better than turning up with six people. But I do know that some of those guys take more than six people's worth of waves. So um, certainly, <laughs> yeah, you can have a group and do it right. And uh, look, two carloads of guys rock up at the beach together, or rock up in a boat and go out to an outer reef all the time. So anyone whinging about five or six people turning up at a surf break done correctly, it's uh, game on, go for it. And yeah. uh, and if you want to have a big event, Sean and I. And Nathan, everyone probably watching actually has either been a part of or participated in or at least gone and watched a big surf comp where hundreds of people rock up. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Mon and CJ, but uh, obviously we're longboarding focused, but you've got a couple of world champions and a couple of Australian champions watching. Uh, Josh Constable's tuned in. There's a bunch of people uh, <laughs> checking out to see what the Surf Witches is all about. You, you mentioned before, Mon, it's probably been a fantastic thing for the surfboard shapers. Um, are you are you buying as a group? Are you, are you going for group discounts? Oh my god! <laughs> okay. um, so we've been really fortunate with a lot of the local vendors have been offering us discounts, and they'll come check my boards out, and we'll we'll give you a surf which is discount, and that's been great. Um, and I I know there's one I can't. I'm really bad with names, so offhand I don't I don't remember um, who they're dealing with, but he's having like these beginner women can go into his shop and then. He talks to them and figures out what board is actually best for them while they're learning. And then they get like, you know, they get very invested in the, like the shaping of their board and they get to learn a little more about it. And, uh, you know, he gives them a tour of his shop and it's been, it's really cool. And it's, you know, it's another thing they get to learn about um, that it's, you know, it's, these vendors are just coming up to us themselves and just offering these things. And it's, it's been really great. But yeah, I, I imagine it's been really good business for a lot of them. Oh, Surfboard Warehouse um, has probably has seen so many surf witches coming in for foamies. <laughs> One of the things with so many of the girls now involved, are you finding that any of the girls are gravitating to the actual manufacturing of making surf craft? You know, shaping boards and learning to glass and things like that? I haven't seen that yet. So, so but we have, we have had uh, one member start making her own surf, uh, surfboard wax, an uh, organic one, which is kind of cool. So... Um, I don't think it'll be too long until we have our own witch that says, you know what, I reckon I can make a better board. Let's go. <laughs> so it's just a matter of time. A bit disappointed to hear about the uh, the wax there. I was pretty keen on being a sp sponsor for the wax sponsor for the surf witches. This is what this whole week's been about for me. It's been surf witches are going to use Huey's choice wax. 
Huey's Choice, 100% Australian made. You can get it at the uh, the Kira Coffee Club, CJ. Um, Excellent. Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's that's fantastic. And look, I, I reckon you'll, I mean, I've, I've got a sales and marketing background and uh, I can, I'm, I'm just looking at this going, you guys <laughs> are going to kill it as far as something that uh, uh, you've got a, a happy viewer base who, who who is really keen on what you are offering, you know, and I reckon good luck to you and I'm exciting to see what you do in the future. Now, these photos you guys have sent through, you're sort of saying that some people follow you around and take some pictures, but some of these were amazing. Are you, um, you can put together a Surf Witches magazine or something. Have you got an Insta oh page? Gosh. So can I just like give, because we do have a, an Insta page that, that, at the Surf Witches. Um, the, one of the other founders, so the other two are Hannah Jessup and Miranda Laidlaw. And Hannah Jessup is a photographer. Uh, so we are so fortunate to have her. And she takes so many of the great photos that I probably sent through, or a few of them are probably hers. But because of her, she's kind of been our, our little tap into the photography community. And uh, so we've had a lot of them that we've met through her where they've come out practicing with our group. And you know, they make friends with the surf witches and then everyone's hanging out together all the time and surfing together and sometimes photographing. So it's just ended up, we've got like, I, and I honestly, what did I send you like 10 photos and we probably have like hundreds of photos uh, of this like quality from so many good photographers uh, from around the gold coast. So we are, we are very lucky because <laughs> that definitely helps, you know, where we're in this social media based world and you know, you're on Facebook and yeah. <laughs> And obviously a good, nice little display of the support there. But uh, like seriously, I think um, Johnny Brazen's uh, watching the show generally each week. You might find you getting a phone call from JB to get some of these shots for him to run, I reckon. There's uh, some amazing stuff. There's even more. Like we have tons and tons of photos. This is just like <laughs> what I was able to scrap together for you guys tonight. <laughs> JB been a big supporter of female surfing for 25 years or something. Um, and he... He always promotes the girls and he's actually, I didn't realize it until we interviewed him. He has a shot of Ralph's son on every um, page uh, in his magazine. He's been doing that all the time. So. Where, where the page number is down the bottom, there's a little icon logo and yeah, Ralph's son. I never realized that either, Sean, after all those years. But um, he's even had Kira as one of his, uh, he does a page three, um, oh, little uh, a photo and a story on uh, female surfers. He's been doing that since day one as well. You've been a uh, page three pinup girl for him, Kira? Uh, yeah, just this last issue actually. Probably that photo behind me, isn't it, I think. <laughs> okay, so everyone better go and buy a copy of PLB now. <laughs> yeah. um, I was just gonna butt in and say, um, I was keeping an eye on the um, on the Facebook Live and Brian Thompson and Jody um, reminded me, but we've got an amazing event in Victoria that you guys will have to come down to once COVID's all over, but it's called- As long as COVID stops, we're there. <laughs> What'd you yeah. say? <laughs> so as long as COVID at the docks. <laughs> yeah, we've got an amazing event down here um, called Why Women on the Water, which is um, a part of the oh, yeah. Surf Coast Longboarders Club down here. And um, yeah, thanks to Brian and that for reminding me, cause that is just like, I went, I've been down the last, we've probably been running it for the last three years and it's just like the most amazing celebration of women surfing and it's just all fun and you've still got that element of having those really, really good surfers there who are sort of fostering the people who've never competed before and um, it's definitely something to keep in mind when you can come down because it's just awesome and Kira as well, obviously. It's, um, it's an epic event. Awesome. Mm, yeah, well, cool. We try to attend as much stuff as we can. So uh, once those borders open. <laughs> wow, that, there's some, some, great longboard comps, <laughs> some great longboarding contests around the country as well. But that, that Jody that Nathan was referring to just then, that's uh, Jody Barsby, uh, former Aussie champ. She's uh, one of Australia's best women longboarders. And from, from a few years ago, she's not so competitive these days, but uh, Jody's mm -hmm. watching actually. Yeah, she said that it was a great event. She had a lot of fun. So uh, like I say, the, the interest you're getting from some big names within our sport is actually kind of interesting as you watch people logging in. Christy Quirk, she's won everything there is to win. She has to keep building bigger dust collecting cabinets from all her trophies and stuff. She'd get a, 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 a up on the Gold Coast there, Christy. Aiden Feely, junior champ. But Sarah Robertson makes a good point. She's saying there's heaps of women longboarders that have put a lot of years into the sport professionally that would probably be able to help, including her. So are you, are you interested in taking on 
assistance from, um, uh, are you at that stage where like if you've got some of the more experienced people, Kira seems pretty keen already from what, I've, what she said, is that the sort of thing that interests you guys or do you want to keep it more for the beginners and sort of grow together? No, we're happy for whoever wants to join. It's not about like the big thing about our group is it's not about what level you're at or, you know, um, I guess we were talking about earlier, your age. <laughs> it's uh, it's just about a bunch of women getting together and having a good time and going surfing. So I we would love, great to, we love have, to, ha to have someone like that with that experience and, and, um, mm -hmm and expertise to be able to mentor some of us um, that want to take our surfing that next level, don't really know how. Can but, I help you, know, you guys? Even, even if they're coming out surfing and we can just watch what they're doing and go, you know, hey, I want to be like that when I grow up, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that would be cool. I, I, I'd really love to help put you guys in contact. If, you, if, that's, if that interests you, yeah. I'd love to put yeah, you in contact with uh, a few friends and shortboarding and longboarding. Um, I've, I've got a friend, Claire Bevel Aqua, who uh, was a women's uh, pipeline master, who I'm sure, um, she, if she was watching this now, she'd probably already be ringing. Uh, but she trains <laughs> athletes to surf the big toe-in waves, and you know, she's absolutely incredible, and promoting women's surfing. I've got a, a couple of friends I'd love to put you guys in contact with, because I reckon that this is actually probably, you know, it, it's the sort of thing <laughs> they would love to do if you guys are keen to get that sort of input. So that's cool as. Now, yeah, absolutely. a really good mate of mine, in fact, I was working for him today, uh, COVID box moving in a, in a warehouse, but Ian Clark, he's, uh, he's messaged in, is it possible for guys to wear the blue band in support? Can I chuck one on so that if the surf witches are out there and they see my blue band, they know that, oh, that bloke is okay. So if they've, if they've got a question or a problem or an issue, that, that, that they know where I'm a, I'm a helper. So we've generally not let too many men have them. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> you should color code them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Color code the men ones. Um, You're so diplomatic, Mon. You can just say, no, no. No blue, no blue band for you. Coming out. Um, but uh, we do have a couple that have proven themselves over time and also just managed to snag one somehow. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so <laughs> come out and meet us. Let's get let's get to know them and go from like there. Going to a music festival, you got your fake blue band on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the knock. No, that's, good, that's a good question from Clarky. He was one of the first people to pipe up and sort of go, "What a great idea to, for girls to support other girls in the lineup." He actually teaches surf life saving in, here in Western Australia as well. Um, so, uh, no, it, interesting to get the, the, the feedback. But of course, this is the thing is as well. It's a little bit condescending to go, "Oh, can the boys come and help?" Because there's there's more than enough women to 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 fill the roles that uh, you know of of mentors and so forth. And so I don't think there's any need to, for help from the guys. But I was, yeah. I'd get a blue wristband if we we're uh, just to show that. Yep, I'm. I'm, I'm yeah. I support. You know, I, I think I think if you if you pointed out that you know what the surf witches are all about, we'd turn around and go, ah, oh, then you're okay then. So if you go, hey, yeah. you're a surf witch, how cool? We'll go, oh, you're okay then, because you know I who we are. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. I don't get a wristband, but I can I can still <laughs> I can still go. <laughs> you still right. be cool with us. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. I want to ask uh, if you girls has seen that shot of the girl. Longbottom, um, so oh, she was surfing last week down south of Sydney. It uh, was a dead man's. Have you did you see the, the images of her on that wave? She's no, I haven't. I, 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 I couldn't tell you. I, I, I flipped through a lot on Instagram. I probably have. Okay, her dad's fairly well known, um, shaper, mm -hmm. um, Dylan Longbottom. He took his daughter out, she's only a teenager, and yeah. Dead man's is taking off in front of a rock shelf that you got to be crazy to do, and she just charged these waves. That she said she got three of them, and man, she's braver than I am by a long. <laughs> I just wondered if you'd seen it and what you thought about it because that was some awesome surfing, boy. Yeah, hey. but if you haven't I mean, seen it, we're go and we we see you said this earlier. We're like the performance in women's surfing has just been. Go, like going up with the number of women that are getting out there and uh i'd say that that's a you know an example of that it's it's great to see you said sorry she's younger hey you yes. said his daughter uh 16 but apparently she's oh. been sleeping she lives in bali normally 
and um, oh. she's been to Tahiti and surf chopes and all that sort of stuff. And man, there wouldn't be too many teenage girls around that have done what she's done. Yeah, no, that's amazing. We've got yeah. a couple in WA as well with Felicity Palmatier, of course, surfing cow bombing and that, and that sort of thing. So a few of the WA girls are ridiculous. As the Claire Bevelacqua, who I mentioned before, won the Pipe Masters. Um, she used to get hoots from the, from the Volcom house at Pipeline. So uh, certainly no stranger to big, powerful, heavy waves. And the thing is, it used, and we've discussed this before, Mon and CJ, but obviously you wouldn't have been viewers of the show, but we've discussed as a panel the fact that it used to be she surfs really well for a girl. Nowadays, you don't say for a girl. It's just, she serves really yeah. good, you know, like, oh, she rips, she's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's been the change in my uh, time in surfing. But yeah. I wanted to ask you a question because guys have always, look, so guys have always had the opportunity to go and take part in the camaraderie by going in surfing competitions, right? Mm -hmm. So girls, of course, can now as well. It just wasn't promoted up until more recently. You know, it was, it was kind of like a small little add-on and Sean will uh, obviously, uh, know himself the entry numbers now in the girls divisions are equal to if not more than across different age groups and things within your own membership and the reason I want to ask this is because is this a replacement for the competition as far as the camaraderie within your membership is, is, are you, are you, is what, what's your sense of uh, are, are a lot of the girls interested in going into competition side of things or is it purely for fun and that's just how they want to leave it is so because we're, we're, we're like so open to, you know, different activities that revolve around surfing. Um, there are women that are now starting to branch off into like local competitions. Just, um, I know with the Kira Surf Riders Club, uh, there's a bunch of our girls that have joined up and now they're, they're starting out competing. And I don't think that that was something that they were like, Hey, I want to compete. It was just, you know, Kira Surf Riders reached out and was like, you know, are you guys interested in joining up with us? Did you want to come check out and see what it's about? Um, and just because of that now, some of the women are getting their foot wet or feet wet in the competitions and uh, loving it and bringing other girls out. So that's starting to grow as well. Um, but we don't limit our group. It's not just like, we're only a fun group and, you know, yeah, not yeah. about no, no, wherever. Just... Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, wherever, wherever the girls, uh, like the conversation goes or, you know, the excitement is, that's where like our group kind of shines. <laughs> cool. Because what, what I was getting at was a point that the, the two roads is sort of as a guy is like, I'm a free surfer, so I just go and do it on my own or I'm a contest surfer and I like to go in contests. Frankly, I go in contests because it gives you the opportunity to surf a surf break with only three other people in the water. That's it. <laughs> That's it. You pay your entry fee and you know you can go and surf snapper for an hour. Uh, you know, if, you get, if you're going to get two heats and you, you pay your entry and you get to go and surf a really good wave and that's your spot for that period of time that's money well spent yeah. in my mind so um but at the that's same why time, i just signed up to the that's why i just signed up to the kira classic a few days ago after sean's yeah, the leaks, I, I went i can't get into kira there's so many people there now i'll do that yep and look and and that's the thing is and also from a competition point of view one of the good things is i, I was in the kira classic last year for the first one it was it was the funnest competition i've ever been to um, yeah, this, one here, this one here and Agnes Water. I've just been up at Agnes Water in northern Queensland, and I know a couple of people in Agnes are tuning in tonight as well. So, good day. That was really, really good fun. Like, the, it's, the, I can't even remember anything that happened during a heat, but the, the, the time on the beach and the, 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 the gatherings each night. And this is what I'm saying is competition as a camaraderie as a, as a team thing as a it's, it's like being in a team sport you get to travel with the group and it, it's kind of cool in that sense but what you guys are, are providing is an avenue to get all those same benefits without the structure of a surf comp so interesting to see how that progresses and cool to see that some of your members are already deciding to give it a go and go in some comps because it doesn't matter if you don't win and uh mm -hmm. cj i mean i've the, due to the COVID thing, actually, my flights have just got cancelled day before yesterday, but I was supposed to be coming across for that Kira comp. It, it's so much fun. You'll, you really enjoy it. And the crew down there do not care about yeah, what you've Yeah. Don't care if you've ever won a heat. If you're down there having fun with a smile on your face, you're winning. Sean, you'd have something to add? Oh, absolutely. Best surf is the one having the most fun, right? Absolutely. 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 That's why I got the biggest trophy last year. Hey, Sean? Yeah, and I've lost it. <laughs> He's not even joking. I'm building a new one for you. Don't worry. <laughs> He's got the glue guy out. <laughs> I'm just trying to find this uh, picture of this girl, Summer Longbottom, and she's uh, 
charging this way, man. It, um, so if you look up her Instagram or it's actually on Magic Seaweed and that as well, series of shots of her surfing um, down there on the south coast. And That's the uh, good thing about our sport as well, though. I mean, you might never go out in waves overhead high in your entire surfing career and still have a smile on your face the entire time. Um, some people just turn into psychos. So uh, <laughs> they just love chasing big waves. That's guys and girls. Some of them are just nuts. And uh, I've been surfing a long, long time. I'm fairly comfortable in my abilities, but I don't want to touch waves like what Sean's talking about. Don't want to borrow it. Yeah. Yeah, well, just yeah, look yeah. at her profile. She surfed Nazari as well Oof. as Chokes. So, yeah, and as a kid, yeah, she was only 13 when she surfed those spots. Crazy. Whoa. That's yeah. crazy. So, hey, um, I just had a quick question for Mon and CJ. I was just going to ask, where do you kind of see um, the surf which is being in, say, five years? Like, is there, a, is there a certain targeted amount of, I guess, members that you want to have? Or, yeah, where do you kind of see it going? So, right now, we actually, we don't have, like, a long-term plan. Um, we went through this phase where everything was just growing so quickly that we were we were trying to figure out how to manage it. And then we were also trying to get on top of, you know, teaching people about the surf etiquette and safety because, you know, it, it's not like we've all done this before. This is the, you know, first time any of us had this a kind of group like this. And mm. um, so right now we've mostly just been trying to manage the numbers that we have um, and try to make sure we get a good foundation in place um, for taking on new members and, and properly helping provide them the correct information that they need. Uh, so, so right now there is not a long-term plan, but uh, we're happy to see it keep keep growing the way it is um and you know we're just amazed every day there's just so many awesome and talented women that keep joining up and being such a positive part of our community and so we just hope it keeps going that way and that we can keep bringing in you know good strong women and yeah keep it positive i guess this is kind of the goal right now yeah, uh, nothing sure too well. long yeah sure it, well, well, it seems like yeah it's got a lot of great support coming in so now, Mon, while you've got Nathan on, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you, this is a real quick sales and marketing lesson, all right? So, Nathan, if a group of our surf, surf witches came to the Melbourne Wave Pool, will we get a group discount? <laughs> oh, ah. On the spot, oh, I'd, I'd hope so. <laughs> let, yeah, me cla let me clarify, Nathan doesn't own the Wave Pool. I'll, I'll circle work. back now. <laughs> I'll try to figure something out. <laughs> Nathan was like, "Let's just put, it, we'll just put a pin in that." But no, no, obviously it's. Uh, <laughs> so you, can, I knew the we Canadian. Our people, your people. Now, now, can I ask you my dad joke question? I was out surfing yeah. the other day, and I knew, and Sean had just messaged me saying the surf witches are on us. But we've been trying to do this for a few weeks now because we know a lot of our viewers are female, and they were really interested to know mm. what's going on and how they can get involved. But I thought mm. that you might even have some of the ladies who like to come to the beach and hang out and look after the kids and things, but don't actually surf, and that they could prepare food for everyone. You know, put a bit of veggie and meat and stuff between bread, and they could be called the sandwiches. <laughs> If they're bringing food, we'll call them whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I can, I'm glad everyone at home can't see Sean, Nathan, Kira, and Mon going, uh. I, <laughs> no, CJ, just before you rocked up on the call, I, I practiced that one with them and I, the response wasn't any different. They didn't like my dad joke. But hey, sandwiches. It had been cancelled by the airlines, mate. I actually cancelled it for that joke. <laughs> 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 so, you, can I ask you a quick question? Because um, I work in Classic Alloy and Surf Shop up here. So my question is yeah. just um, how some of like the local surfing businesses can um, maybe supply your blue wristbands to people who become part of the members or do they just contact you um, directly through the Facebook page? or? Yeah, they can contact us. Um, probably actually almost better than that is uh, either directly through email. Um, is that something we could post um, with on your Facebook page? Yeah. Okay. So uh, through email at the surfwitches at gmail.com and through our Instagram page is another good way. And that's also at the surfwitches. And so Nathan's our Instagram man. So he'll link it up on that. And of course, uh, we can, put, we can put up all those links on the Facebook page as well because I know everyone will be interested. But the people watching at home didn't like the uh, didn't like the dad joke either. Just for Drop the record, it out of the, <laughs> uh, <laughs> drop it out of the YouTube video. Yeah. 
people reading. <laughs> so, but once we realise that no, one, yeah, no one liked the joke, I just cut it out so later on, so I don't look so bad. But um, <laughs> so, so the, the website, obviously, um, like I say, a good a good place to start from. And how how often do you reckon you're getting the groups together at the moment? Like, because mm. actually, um, oh, Dean daily. Kevin, daily. Uh, we're not official. We ha I don't think we haven't done an official meetup since COVID. But there are women that are meeting up daily in smaller groups. Unreal. And I think uh, yeah. great opportunity to share the coastline, mm -hmm. share the stoke with one another. And Dean Bevan Turbo down in Kingscliff tells me there's a group growing rather rapidly down there as well. But it have you guys got any other important information you need to get out to our viewers before I let you go? Because I know that Mon, it's what, three o'clock in the morning or something. So it's well, we're at four. It's okay. The, the coffee's kicked in. <laughs> 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 I'm totally propped up on caffeine right now. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think the thing to remember if anyone if anyone's thinking about surfing or wants to join don't be shy come out say hi you know everyone is so welcoming and so lovely um, and if you're a beginner let us know you're a beginner if you've never been out let us know that um, you know and just touch base with us because we've every single day there's a post at least by one newbie saying I'm really new is anyone going out and there's always someone two three even four that say, hey, we're here, um, meet you here, meet you at this time, let's go. So don't be scared, don't be shy, we don't bite hard. So um, come out and, and meet us and we'll give you your blue wristband and we'll go from there. That's yeah. such an army joke, that sounded like a PTI from Puckapanyo. I don't bite much. <laughs> CJ knows exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> so. <laughs> I stood there with an SLR, don't you worry. So look, I'll put you onto widescreen. So we're in uh, we're in Brady Bunch mode, so everyone can see everyone. So uh, thanks very much for joining us, ladies. It's been just on an hour, so or just over an hour, and, and especially the old boys, they get grumpy if we keep them up too long. They're going to get off and recharge the batteries and things. But uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you guys on. And my mate Clark, he's actually already starting to make his own blue wristband. I have to r remind him he's not allowed <laughs> to have one. But uh, look, if I, and like I say, I've, I've, I know I'm going to get messages about this from a few of my uh, friends who, within the, the, the female surfing world, who are definitely people that I think you guys would uh, benefit from associating with. And I know that they're going to call because I know that they'll enjoy uh, being a part of it and helping you out with your, with your journey. It sounds like it grew really big, really quick. And that certainly explains for a couple of the people who were there for your 60 person gathering, uh, that it wasn't intentional. And uh, the plan is to uh, not invade like that <laughs> without notice. And so that's, yeah, that's had a chance to discuss that as well. Cause uh, you know, it sounds like you guys have got the great heart and a great intention and you've got nothing but uh, nothing but thumbs up from me. Any, anything else to add from the other panel members? Oh, sweet. Thanks for coming on guys. Really yeah, no, thank you. I think it, think it just as a member of um, Surf Witches, and I'd probably speak on behalf of all the witches, is like a big shout out to Monica, Miranda and Hannah for, for pulling this group together because their group has been life changing for so many women in the local area. And, um, you know, every single day you see an appreciation post and just to put it out there publicly on a, on a bigger scale, I think, you know, well done to those ladies. Um, great initiative and I can't wait to see where it goes in the next five years. Amazing job. And Sarah Robertson's just commented saying she just found out literally this evening that Hannah's connected to her via her uncle Matthew, small world. So there you go. Oh, yeah. I know you're going to be hearing from Sarah Robertson and she's basically already committed to helping you guys out uh, with a bit of uh, pro, pro surfer knowledge and experience. So awesome. we might have started a little ball rolling here. And I, well, you guys have already started a big ball rolling. I think we might have added a, a layer of moss to it maybe, but uh, if that's the case, I'm stoked. And, um, I look forward to hearing more about your adventures. Yeah, Sean, everyone can see you. Yeah, all right. Before we wind up, just one, two things. Um, oh, just a big shout out to Chelsea Williams. She was out at uh, Kira last Friday in fairly solid waves, absolutely charging. She's making a, or oh, she was um, part of a crew doing a advert for Qantas. So it's good to see that, yeah, we're getting some interesting advertisers using longboarding and using um, female surfers and for the girls if they don't know Chelsea has been a former world longboard champion local girl so really happy for her 
And um, I guess she came, for she came me, close a couple of times as well. Eh? She had a oh, couple of runner ups. Yeah. Like her world title was a long time yeah. coming. She's yeah. an incredible yeah. surfer. Charging. Yeah. She, she, she's a real power surfer. Um, yeah, brilliant to watch. Um, and our guest for next week, Courtney uh, Potter. Courtney's he's coming in. Be, Unreal. He's going to be talking all things fins. Um, yeah, he, the guy's a, I'll say, an evil genius or a mad genius. I don't know. But absolutely brilliant guy. He'll be very interesting. So hopefully everybody can tune in. To listen to Courtney. Oh, seriously, I love them. The golf ball, dimple fins. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll be able to um, grab my surfboard from downstairs. I've got some fins that Courtney made in the early days. You, I promise you, none of you have ever seen anything like it before. He worked at a, uh, a big toy company in America and uh, picked up a lot, of, uh, a lot of intelligent design ideas. Have you seen the golf ball, dimple fins? Ladies? Mon? CJ? No, I no? no. All right. You'll have to tune in next week. Can we uh, can we welcome you to the Oz Longboarding team? Can we lock you in to, as viewers? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'll start. Well, unreal. Okay. And DJ, look, I, you know, I mean, I'll watch the recorded one. I won't be on it. <laughs> you, can, you can watch the YouTube version, Mon, and that's got my dad jokes cut out. So that's the way to go, anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. So watch it always a day or two later. But look, thanks heaps. And CJ, look, obviously you'll, you'll bump into Sean probably as well. Keep us in the loop as far as if you've got anything interesting happening and we'll, uh, we'll utilise and help you out where best we can to help uh, spread the word when you've got events and things on. Excellent. Thank you. On behalf of all of our viewers. Emily, I've got a few oh. who I coach who are probably watching right now who I reckon are going to sign straight up. So thank you so much. And I'm sure they all appreciate what you're doing as well already. <laughs> Unreal, awesome. and yeah, I think you're going to get another little another little flood as this uh, as this goes out. And hopefully, if you tell all your guys about us, we'll like double our viewer numbers like overnight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, we'll look, share, I've, really, we'll share I've really got to go. I think my girlfriend's just tuned into the live webcast to see if I'm ready to start cooking dinner or not yet. So uh, we better let everybody go. <laughs> Thanks again for taking the time to chat with us, Mon, especially this time of the day. Congratulations on what you've done so far on behalf of. Uh, the lady surfers, thanks heaps. And on the behalf of all the surfers, for the reasons that Kira mentioned before as well. Keep doing what you're doing. If we can be of any assistance, wave to your mums next week. Courtney Potter's here for episode 11. It's uh, been fun having you. Oz Longboarding, episode 10. Over and out. All right. <laughs>